Man of Maranatha, Detroit, Michigan, where everything depends upon a proper understanding of Genesis 3.15, where the Most High God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Her seed's heel will bruise your seed's skull. Most people don't understand this passage. They say that it's very mystical. And it's mystical because they don't know who the serpent was. They don't know who the woman was. They have an idea that the seed of the woman was Messiah, but they do not understand who the seed of the serpent was. This was a prophecy, and when we understand prophecy, we know that if the prophecy comes true, if something is told to you before it happens and it happens, we know that that is that prophet that prophecy is not only true, but who said it is a prophet. Bible says that if this is how you determine a prophet, if what he says does not come to pass, you take him out and you stone him. We know that the word of God does not come back void. If the most high has said it, then we know he is the prophet of all prophets. He is the one that gives the prophecies, the messages to let you know what will happen before it happens. So the most high is giving man who's created in his image the first prophecy. It is called the Proto-Evangelium. Proto meaning first, Evangelium meaning gospel, good news. This was the first good news that came from the Most High God. Now, I was talking to my mom about this, uh, and I was trying to express to her that once you understand what God said, you can understand what man is trying to say what God said. See, it's not by flesh and blood that we have understanding. It is by the spirit. And we understand that God is spirit. So if God told the serpent, who is the author of lies, God is telling the serpent, who's always lying, always twisting the scriptures, always tweaking them. If God told the serpent something, do you think God is going to lie? or that his message won't be accurate. God's message is going to be on point. You, we, us, we got to make sure that we understand what God is saying. Let's not depend upon the traditions of men and what men are saying. So the question is from a mom, as we discussed uh, the scriptures, it's the Trinity. If you have such an understanding of Genesis 3.15, then how would you explain the Trinity or refute it or support it? Okay, so this is how I would do it. The woman of Genesis 3.15, the Catholic Church teaches that that woman is exclusively Mary. Now, that is true, but it is not the truth. Or shall I say, it is a fact, but it is not the truth. See, a woman gives egg, not seed. In order for a woman to have a child, she has to have a seed. What the Gentiles don't understand about this, then it's because they have been uh, teaching this doctrine of immaculate conception or shall I say the virgin birth is that when, a, when they know that a woman doesn't give seed, a woman gives egg, it's like, well, how did this woman get the seed? How did this woman get impregnated? Because if you're trying to tell me, and, and now here's the traditions of men, I'm jumping around a little bit, but here's the tra traditions of men. The traditions of men say that Jesus is the only begotten son of God. And if Mary is the woman, then in a strange way, God allowed 
Mary to get pregnant. That's that's what the this Trinity is kind of supporting. And this is how you get to the root root of it to dispel it. Now. If Mary is the mother of Jesus. How does she get pregnant? If Jesus is the son of God. Now, if Jesus is known to be the son of Joseph, then that would be his father and not God. Has Jesus ever been identified being this is the son of Joseph, Mary and Joseph, whose brothers we know? See, when you look at Luke 323, as was supposed, that was in parentheses. And when the translators began to translate our holy text, they seen that what people were believing versus what is written, it wasn't lining up when they were translating it. When the men and women were translating our text, they seen that the people of the book, they were again following the pagan ideas. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing has changed. Israel has always looked to the other uh, nations, other people's gods to accept their interpretation versus what the Most High has said. And the pagans have this Trinity doctrine. So when you get back to Luke 3.23, when they translated this text, a, a translator put in parentheses. And when you know the Greek, the Greek language does not have parentheses. When, I'm sorry, when they were translating it into English, they put parentheses, parentheses there to let the reader know, the current reader know that, hey, Jesus was Joseph's father, as was supposed. I mean, come on, y'all, because this is the issue with with reading the book and listening to other people like Adam and Eve listen to the serpent. See, when you listen to false teachers, you will get a a false doctrine. The true doctrine is the seed of the woman's heel will be over the seed of the serpent's skull. Now, when they bring Trinity into it, this is a false notion that will get you off of the, the focus of what God has said, because the Trinity doctrine was developed in 321 by a Catholic theologian by the name of Tertullian. And I think uh, Augustine, he also uh, put in his two cents regarding the, the validity of the Trinity. All right, let me let me step back a bit. So here is the here. Let me let me start over. Here's the the real foundation of the Trinity. OK, here's the Trinity. It is the father, the son and the Holy Spirit. OK, here's the truth of it. There is the father. And there is a son. Now, in order for a man to have a baby, what does he need? I mean, let's, let's just be real with it. In order for a man to have a child, what does he need? He needs a woman. So it's not so much that there is no Trinity or that there are not three. The three are truly the father, the mother, and the son. That's, that's the, that, that is the triunity. Okay? Now, if you want to say Trinity... If you understand it as mother, father, and son, and that divine family, they are they are echad, uh, yachad, uh, e c h a d. They are of one unison. They are on one accord, but they are three different people. That I would say there's no problem with that. But when you say Trinity to the untrained mind, then they will they'll jump on you. You know, because they'll say, oh, hero Israel, our Lord, our God is one. But when you look at the word 
one in Hebrew is plural. It's two. When you go back to Genesis, let us create man in our image. Male and female, he created he them. See, when you understand that your God, your creator, can't lie. He can't lie. But why do you call him a he if he is a spirit? Your God has no gender, correct? I am not a man that I should lie or nor son of man that I should repent. I think that's in uh, numbers. If God is not a man, then why do you call him father? Why do you call him him? Why are you personifying and uh, genderizing your spiritual father, your spiritual God? And it's because this is how the, the scriptures have been rolled out to us, that our creator was so awesome. Our creator is so awesome that the first image that he made was of them. Him and his wife. See, when a man and a woman on earth, when they get together, don't they become one? But yet they're two. But according to God, they're one because man personifies God's image. A man and a woman get together. They become one. God, the father and his wife, they are together. They are one, but yet they're two because it says, let us. Let us create men in our image. Now, if God can't lie and God has made an image, don't you know what an image looks like? If I put a truck and a car right in front of you, are you going to say it's a, a banana and a goat? It's a truck and a car. If God said, let us create men in our image, male and female, then what do you think God is like? Male and female, masculine, feminine. Moses even wrote it in the, in the law, the fifth commandment. Honor your parents, your mother and father, father and mother. That's the law. And when you get into the law, you will see that the first tablet is dealing with God alone. One through five is dealing with God alone. Six through 10 deal with man alone. The Catholic Church changed the fifth commandment and put it onto the second tablet. Now things are out of balance. The scales are out of balance. It's a 40-60. No, we're looking for a 50-50 love. We want to be perfectly balanced with God. Elohim. Elohim is plural. Elohim is plural. So when you go to the Hebrew and it says, it doesn't say God, it says Elohim. Elohim is plural. It's not one. So let us create man in our image. The first thing that the father created was his wife. I think this is in the book of Ecclesiasticus. She is the first thing that was created. You know why? Here's the proof. We, man, Adam is made out of the image of God, correct? So let's follow the image. God the Father is first, and then he creates woman, or his wife. This is what Solomon has said. He's the wisest man that ever lived. And you remember what he, as God, he asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for treasures and, and pleasures. He wanted wisdom. So the first image is God the Father creates his wife, Shekinah, El Shaddai the angel of the Lord, the queen of heaven, who bore a male child who was to rule the nations with an, uh, a rod of Aaron. How is it? The, the end is in the beginning and the beginning is in the end. You start at Genesis, you go straight to Revelation 12. What's there? A sign in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. That was not Mary. That is if we accept the precept that precept that 
the end is in the beginning. So let's go back to the beginning. God made the first image of man, Adam. What comes out of Adam's side? What's the first thing that comes out of Adam's side? A woman. Hmm. So God the Father creates a woman. Now Adam, he has a woman come out of his side. Let's look at Jesus, the second Adam. When Jesus is on the cross, Genesis 3.15, the Roman centurion stabs him in the side to make sure that he's dead because they don't want no insurrect insurrection. <laughs> they want to make sure he is dead. What comes out of Jesus' side? Blood and water. Now, what does that prefigure? His ecclesia. See, when Jesus says, uh, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, if he's the second Adam, he's basically saying what the first Adam said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Now we can cohabitate together and make something happen. Jesus is saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. There's no life in you without blood. There's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. This blood that you drink this blood that you or this flesh that you eat, it is the new covenant that God has made between man and himself. It's not an issue of the Lord's Supper and if you're eating it literally or physically. It is, are you following the instructions of the one who was sent? Genesis 3.15. The one who was sent is the Messiah and you do whatever he says. Why should I listen to Jesus when I got God? Well, if you go to Exodus 23, 20, God says, behold, I send an angel, do whatever he says. He will forgive you of your sins. Do not provoke him. So if God told you to listen to someone and that person came on the scene and he tried to tell you something, and you say, well, you ain't God. Well, who got the problem now? Especially when the scriptures have said, God said, listen to somebody because I'm sending you somebody. God already said it in Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. But we don't understand this until it is revealed. This is the revelation. We are, we are in this moment of time to trying to understand what's going on by studying to show ourselves approved and rightly dividing the word of God, which is this book. Seek ye out the book of the Lord, for none shall want her mate. Isaiah 34, 16. What's the book? The Bible. Who's the author? The Lord. Well, who is she? Huh? Who is the mate? Huh? That's mama. Proverbs 1, 8. Proverbs 3. The Song of Songs. We have a mother. And this mother is our wisdom. When we forsake our wisdom in obeying these Ten Commandments, we forsake God. A child comes to a, a child needs something from the father because the father is the source of the family. The father know the, the child knows I can't go to daddy right now. Let me go to mama. Mama could probably ease them, you know, soften them up a bit. You go to mama. She gives you her two cents. Then you don't follow mama's instruction and you go straight to daddy. What is daddy going to tell you? Did you do what your mama said? I mean, the typology is there. It, it, it's a way to refute the Trinity or understand the Trinity. It's a triunity. There are three that bear witness. Three. That's the magic number. Man and a woman had it. Okay, anyway. So, when you understand that masculine feminine, Adam has a wife out of his side. Yeshua, the Messiah, out of his side comes his bride because there's going to be a wedding. But who are you going to have a wedding with, Christ? Well, my wife. And my wife will do what I say. 
That's my bride. That's my ecclesia. See, I'm not going to have a wife who will listen to other nations tell me what God said. Serpent, God didn't really say don't eat of the tree or touch it. See, the accusations are the traditions of flesh, the traditions of men. When we rightly divide this up, we see it is for what it is. So when these wolves and sheep's clothing come amongst us, we can refute them. All right, let me back it up again. So here it is. Masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine. Mama's baby, daddy's, no, no, daddy's maybe, daddy's son. Because we know mama and we know daddy and we know they're not fooling around. That is why he is his only begotten son. This is the idea for you to understand so that you too can become a child of God. Because you know daddy's voice. You know what daddy is saying. And when you don't understand what daddy is saying, then who should you go to? You go to mama. Mama, I don't understand. Holy Spirit, I don't understand this. What's, what's going on? And then you study. And then you wait. And then when daddy tells you, then you understand. First Adam, out of his side, a woman, Eve. Second Adam, on the cross, out of his side, the ecclesia. God the father, God the mother, the fifth commandment. Let's look at Lucifer, the devil, as most people, the traditions of men have taught it, masculine. Does he have a counterpart? Yes, the whore. Everything is masculine feminine. It is so masculine feminine that guess what? It's best that you come out of her, my people. Do you know who she is? See, you might be in mama, or you know, you might be in your, your real mama. I don't know. But if your father is the father of lies and my mother is the mother of truth and she sets me free, then what you have to determine is to test the spirit, test what I am saying. You might not have never heard this before. You may have heard it here and there and, you know, but never put together like this. Is it the truth? No, I'm just saying it's very factual and credible. And if you can't understand this, then your righteousness, you know, it, it really is. It's, it's up there. It, it, it supersedes the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. See, in order to really understand the Most High, you got to come to him as a child. You got to empty your goat skin, you know, of, of wine, all of those false doctrines. Because, see, you're drunk off of Babylon. The truth of the matter is God cannot lie. Did God make man in his image? Yes. Is the image male and female? Yes. Then why isn't God male and female or masculine feminine? That's all I'm saying. Masculine feminine. It's not so much that you have to accept masculine and femininity. It is your brain is so it's, it's so calcified that you can't even think. You have to have a renewing of your mind. Your mind is the dirt. It has to be plowed so a good and righteous seed can be planted in there. And when that righteous seed is planted in there, you hope it bears fruits. Because the only fertilization that will happen is your good works. Do you have faith? Well, even the demons have faith and shudder. If you have faith, show me your works. What are you doing? Do you love him? Then what should you be doing? Keeping his commandments. So when you get, when you have this understanding of masculine feminine, then you can understand that God is God, the father, and he alone, and there is no other. That's daddy. And daddy has a wife, wisdom. That's wisdom. And the first thing that got daddy created was his wife, uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus. 
She is in Genesis 1. When you read Genesis 1 in a normal King James Version, it will say God. That's mama. Chapter 2, it is the Lord God. That's daddy. Now, some people will say, look, man, you taking this stuff too literal and trying to break it down so you can still support, you know, Christianity and stuff. That's not it. I'm just saying, listen and understand. Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is plural. Our Lord, our Elohim is plural. He's united. He has a mate. Isaiah said it. So you, you would rather fight me and what I'm saying, but what, you're going to twist Isaiah's words around? <laughs> wow. Okay. Just like what 2 Peter 3.16, many people don't understand what Paul is saying and they twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Look, keep going around denying that God has a wife. I would say you you are you have more if if I could not show you any precepts in this book that would support my insanity then yeah I'm a heretic but look you got the 5th commandment you got us you got Isaiah 7 4 uh, uh Isaiah 34, 16, seek out the book of the Lord. Then she don't want her mate. You got Paul talking about y'all on the milk and some of y'all on the meat. What's, what's milk come from? A tit. El Shaddai, many breasted one. My father isn't feminine. The queen of heaven, our father, which are in heaven. So if the father is in heaven, then where is his wife? In heaven, behold, behold a John said he's seen the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> John said he's seen the Ark of the Covenant in the last verses of chapter 11. The three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant was Aaron's staff, a jar of manna, and the uh, two tablets. The two tablets is Jesus, the law that took on flesh. That He did not violate the law, not one bit nor tittle, nothing. Aaron's staff. He is our most high priest because in order to be a priest, you had to be a man. And in, and since Christ was the male child who was to rule with, rule with the rod of Aaron, he offered himself as the sacrifice of Israel. Before we get on the shedding of blood is the remission of sins and y'all got to drink is just put that to the side. First, understand masculine feminine because by him being the Ten Commandments taken on flesh, the, his word, by him being our most high priest, Aaron's staff, he is also the manna. Your forefathers ate this manna, yet they died. This new manna I will give you, you will eat and you will live. Well, give us this new bread. Give us this new bread so we can eat. This bread is my flesh. Hold up, man. I ain't eating your flesh. That's cannibalistic. Many of the Jews heard this and said, this is hard sayings. Who can understand this? And they walked away. If Jesus is not the author of confusion, wouldn't you say, hey, brothers, hold up. Let me let me try to explain this to you. Y'all misunderstood me. No, he turns to the 12. Does this offend you? And what did the 12 say? Hey, man, where else do we go? This is some deep stuff. Uh, I look. We already see you raising the dead and healing people, walking on water. And now you're trying to tell us to eat your flesh and drink your blood. I don't know what you're saying, but all I know is Genesis 3.15, because the Most High God said the Messiah was coming. And if you are the Messiah, I'm rolling with you. I might not understand everything you're saying, but I'm rolling with you. So when you understand, okay, so the Ark of the Covenant was carried around for nine months. Those three things, if those three things prefigure Christ, the Ark of the Covenant, as John is trying to get you to see, was carried around for nine months in a woman. Where's the Ark of the Covenant? Because we know that the Ark of the Covenant has power, dunamis. Every time the Israelites had the Ark of the Covenant, it, there was power. So, 
the woman is now the ark. She gave birth to Christ. Contextually, it's all there. And now we too have the authority to personify Christ on earth. If we listen to the father, Exodus 23, 20, if we see the sign, Genesis 3, 15, David cut off Goliath's head, takes it to Jerusalem, buries it. Jesus is crucified on a hill called Golgotha, Goliath's skull. Is written in Latin. Latin is the language of science. Calvary, that means cranium. That means a skull. It was a physical tor corporeal skull. So that would dispute if Jesus is half man, half God. See, if Jesus didn't really have no daddy, then he's a he's a Nephilim. Because in Genesis 6, the sons of God, people who were not supposed to have sex, has sex with humanity. Here you having the Lord God having sex with Mary. Isn't that hypocritical? You're going you're gonna to condemn the fallen angels for having sex with women and producing the Nephilim, but yet you going to tell us in Genesis 3.15, according to the Catholic Church, you're going to tell us in Genesis 3.15 that Mary is going to get pregnant without having sex with a, a, a man and you're going to be the father? Come on, people. Man, we're really drunk off this stuff. Okay, so the Trinity is God the Father, God the Mother, and the Son. That is the triunity. And yet they are all, the father is the, the head. Mama is trying to help us understand. And the son is the one who has shed his blood so that because we don't understand, if we are to repent and become humble, God will restore us. He is our only redeemer. But many of us, Many of us, including myself, we grieve the Holy Spirit because we don't follow instructions. You really grieve the Holy Spirit when you are saying that she is a he. How disrespectful. Well, the, whole, the New Testament says the Holy and he will comfort. No, who comforts? Does a man comfort? A man ain't comforting unless it's his wife. Keep denying the Holy Spirit and see, see what happens. Jesus himself said, you can deny me. You ain't even got to believe me. But you can't deny the Holy Spirit. Because you know why? Mama and daddy are on the same page. Jesus is an extension of them. He is flesh. He is a son of man that becomes son of God by following his instructions. But... Jesus is God because Genesis 1 says God. It created God. Who is it? There is no word to describe Elohim in this passage. So it was God. And it's not, not a form of disrespect. When you go to the original Hebrew, it says it's like Elohim created God. But when you have such a Hellenized uh, viewpoint or Christianized viewpoint of what God is, you miss what's going on. God is a righteous, God means a judge. And Jesus was the ultimate judge. He rightly divided the word of God in, in flesh so that when you follow him, when the time comes that the healing comes into the sun from the sun, Malachi, there's going to be healing from the sun, S-U-N. You should have been able to been studying, getting all of the viruses out, like the Trinity, all of these false doctrines, off of your garment. You have to have a pure mind. 
You have this pure mind because you've been rightly dividing the word of God and been listening because be careful of who you listen to. You could be entertaining an angel. But every time you hear somebody, they ain't, that, that ain't from God. Most of the times you will attack them just like they attack Jesus saying that he is of the devil. When truth comes before you. And as Jesus told Pontius Pilate, what is truth? Can you handle the truth? I am the man of Maranatha, Detroit, Michigan. There is three, triunity, masculine, feminine, son. We are supposed to listen to the son, Exodus 23, 20, Genesis 3, 15, Christ crucified, Genesis 1, John 1. It's all in the scriptures. No trinity. The Trinity was developed in 321, 320 years at 320 years later after Jesus died. If they were preaching Trinity, if if Jesus told the disciples Trinity in his while he was walking with them, they should have been writing, expressing Trinity from the get go. But when you read James one, when you read all of the epistles, they say Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and and God Almighty. Not and as in as in connecting the two, but it, there's a comma, and it's showing you that Jesus is the one of Genesis three fifteen because he was sent by the Father, and that is that is the fulfillment of the proto evangelium. As David cut that Goliath's head off, the Nephilim, the Nephilim. Goliath was a Nephilim, not as in an alien hooking up with a person. The, the, the serpent was a female Gentile woman. She took the drink of adultery and her thigh rotted off and she crawled on her belly. Look it up. In, I think it's in Leviticus. Chapter five, when a woman is convicted or is uh, uh, charges of adultery comes a, a, upon her, she drinks the cup from the priest. If she is guilty, her thigh rots off and she crawls on her belly. The beasts of the field were animals and they were other people. Jesus is the lion of Ab uh, the lion of Judah, the lamb of God. The Hebrew language is an agrobiolinguistic language. Agriculture and men are synonymous. Jesus is the seed of David. He is the root of Jesse. He is the vine. He is the branch. He is the tree of life. Any questions, please put them at the bottom. Let's get into this. Pass it around. Study it up. Have the spirit of the Bereans. Check it out. I ain't lying. And if I am lying, call me out respectfully. We can reason on this. We ain't got to argue and cuss each other out. But if you come at me cussing and fussing, I know who you are of, because how can you love God and curse your brother? I am again the man of Maranatha, Detroit, Michigan. Praise be to God.